We're continuing in section 7.1, and we're looking at inductor types and applications. All inductors are similar in certain respects. They all possess inductances, self-induced voltages, and opposed changes in current. So these are uh, three common characteristics of all inductors. They possess inductances, they have a self-induced voltage, and they oppose changes in current. Inductors can be classed by either fixed or adjustable. And over here we see the schematic symbol. Here we have a fixed inductor, and here we have an adjustable conductor. The core materials used include iron, powdered iron, and ferrite. Ferrite bead, and there is a picture of some of these in your text, are used to add inductance and resistance. They have a wide variety of sizes and shapes. Ferrite components typically have a hole through which a wire or leaded component may be inserted. They add series resistance, or excuse me, series inductance and resistance to a wire, and notice this at high frequencies. And so this is where in the first section we had mentioned how they could be used to choke out unwanted high frequencies. And this is one, one uh, application where that will happen. Uh, one of the more common uses of ferrite beads are with computer cables, where they are slipped over the cable while the cable is being ma made or snapped around the cable in two pieces after the cable has been manufactured. These are seen on mice, keyboard, and monitor cables. Cables can act as antennas interfering with radio and television audio and video. They can also receive signals that can interfere with computer operation. And so here we see this is a uh, cable from a computer monitor and you notice this is the end that would plug into the computer and here uh, we have our ferrite beads and these will be used to uh, attenuate and remove uh, high frequencies coming out of the computer or, or uh, those that might accumulate through uh, the cable since the cable can act as an antenna. Ferrite beads work by reducing the radio frequency interface created by these cables. And so the, the interference can come from a, a couple of different sources, but at any rate, the ferrite beads are used to reduce these high frequency signals. Series and parallel inductors. Inductors may be connected together like resistors. With inductors, inductance and inductive reactants must be considered. And so here we have a circuit, and this looks much like the circuits we considered earlier with resistors, where we had resistors in series. And here we have inductors in series. Series inductors combine, and notice the, the note here, like series resistors. And so uh, if we had given inductances here, they would add up just like we would with um, resistance. And so if we were to, to label some, let's say this one is 100 millihenries, and maybe this one is 200 millihenries, and maybe this one is 300 millihenries. And if we were to add these up, there would be uh, 600 millihenries of inductance in this circuit. Series inductive reactances can be found by summing the individual reactances. So here we have the individual inductances, but we do not know what the reactances are, uh, and we wouldn't be able to do that unless we knew what the frequency of our signal source was. And remember, we did this earlier. We said that the uh, uh, inductive reactance was equal to 2 times pi times uh, the frequency, which we're not given here. Uh, in this case, if it was L1 here, times 100 uh, millihenries. And that would give us an X of L value in ohms. And we could, you know, some, we could do it for 200 and 300. We could calculate the inductive reactance of each. And then we would add them up to get the a total reactants. Probably the easier way to do this, or the more sensible quick way to do it, would be to say that X of L equals 2 
times 3.14, which is pi, times whatever the frequency is, and then multiply that simply times the total inductance of the uh, circuit, and that would give us our uh, total reactants in ohms, and these would add just like they would in a series resistance circuit. Now, parallel inductances. Parallel connected inductances divide the current flowing into them, okay? So you have a source of current here, and the current that's going to go through this is going to be, you know, uh, divided from the source. So the induced voltage for a given inductor will be lower for each of the individual inductors when compared to the applied current. Total inductance in a parallel configuration is found by. And so here we're calculating what is the inductance in this entire circuit. And, and in this is, remember, the one we looked at was series pr prior to this. This one in parallel. And if we were just to put some values here, let's just say that uh, we're going to put in the same, uh, not 3,300. We'll say 100, 200, and 300 is the inductance of each of these uh, inductors. And if we did this formula here, now, now if you look at this formula, this looks very much like the formula that we use in calculating parallel resistance. And I don't know if you recall, but in parallel resistance, we found that the parallel resistance was going to be less than the smallest component. So if we were to go ahead and, and solve for this, we would find, and if we were to, um, uh, I guess we could just draw it right here. If we were to sum the in inductance of all three of these, we would find that it would be less than 100. Okay, parallel inductive reactances. When inductive reactances are connected in parallel, the total inductive reactance is less than the smallest individual reactance. Now, this is the same thing that we just looked at uh, when we're looking at inductance, only now we're looking at the inductive reactants. And the parallel inductive reactance is calculated with this formula. Again, this is the same formula that we use with resistance. And if we were simply to change this to R, 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 and R, this would be the same formula. Now, um, this is very, very uh, uh, similar in another regard when it, the formula is the same and actually the values we're looking at are very closely related because remember we looked at resistance it was measured in ohms and the inductance here remember these reactances they are also measured in ohms uh, it's just that the the reactance is going to be a function of frequency so this, the, in, in inductive circuits, this, this, this frequency can vary based on the frequency. But the formula to calculate the, the, the reactance, which is measured in ohms, is exactly the same formula. And here we have a circuit. This is a circuit you could build in Workbench. In fact, I did build this circuit in Workbench. And I copied it and pasted it here. And so what I'd like to do is just to do a few calculations here. We'll calculate the parallel inductance, and then we'll calculate the, the reactance in this as, as a whole circuit. And so let's bring up our um, little calculator, and let's calculate the, um, first of all, we'll calculate the parallel inductance. Remember, this is the same formula that we, that we use for resistance. So 100 milli, that is the same as 0.1. So we'll come down here, we'll say 0.1, and then we'll do the 1 over function. And we'll, we'll add that to, and here we have 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and again 1 over, and then plus 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 1 over, and then that will equal, okay, 18.33. And then we'll do the 1 over function here. And here we have the uh, inductance. This is the parallel inductance. And you'll notice that the parallel inductance is less than the smallest component. So we have 54.5. Let's just round that to 54.5. And we'll note that uh, 54.5 millihenries. Now, um, 
now we, we could redraw this circuit now. We could say here is our signal source and we have an inductance of 55.4 and we have this is a one volt source at one k hertz. Now if we were going to calculate the reactance of this circuit then we would say um, let's see we'd start with 2 times uh, 3.14 which is pi times the frequency which is 1000 or one, one, yeah, 1 k hertz times the inductance which is 54.5 millihenries and let's let's get the calculator and see what we would get there. Um, we would say okay 2 times 3.14 times the frequency of 1000 times 54.5 millihenries 54.5 uh, let's see exponent uh, minus 3 equals and we get 342.2 ohms okay 342 ohms and that is going to be our value that we'll call x of L and that represents the total reactance of the circuit. Now how could we check that to see if that is in fact the correct answer? Now when I did the simulation with this circuit um, I put the, uh, the, notice I inserted the meter into the circuit and I measured the current and I, I, I just typed in the value that we got which was 2.917 uh, milliamps. Now, um, uh, because an inductor acts much like a resistor uh, in, in regard to its resistance, we could use Ohm's law to verify that this is in fact the correct uh, answer. And we could use any area because we know the voltage, we know the current, we know the reason. We could have used any. We could have used any variation of Ohm's law to do that. Um, why don't we say? Let's see. If we say um, uh, voltage divided by resistance should equal current. And so our voltage is 1, our resistance is 342. Let's see what we get. So let's um, get our calculator out here and we'll say 1 volt divided by 342 and that should equal 2.92. Okay, that is very close to our value over here and that confirms that our answer is in fact correct. Okay, circuit analysis of inductive circuits. Solving for voltages and currents in an inductive circuit uses the same principles as for resistive circuits using variations on Ohm's law. And so here are these are the th I just mentioned them on the previous slide, but this is this these are the formulas for Ohm's law. Uh, the only difference is that where the x of L here would be R. So remember, current equals voltage divided by x of L. Uh, that is the same thing as current equals voltage divided by resistance, which we've done before. Voltage equals in this case current divided by x of L, or current times x of L. So that would be uh, current times resistance in Ohm's law. And then here we have uh, uh, X of L equals VL over IL and that in Ohm's law that would be resistance equals voltage divided by current. Okay, we're going to complete this session with looking at um, uh, calculating a voltage drop across an inductor and there's a couple of ways that we could do this. Uh, here again, this is another circuit from Electronics Workbench. Uh, we have 500 millivolts RMS applied at a frequency of 200 kHz. We have inductors in the circuit. I already went in and calculated the reactances. This one, this 250 at this particular frequency is going to be 314 ohms and this 100 millihenry component will be at 125.6 uh, given this frequency. Now given this, we can apply uh, basic voltage divider rules that we did with resistors and we could say um, like we've done right here, one 
25.6 divided by 125.6 plus uh, 314. And that would give us a ratio times the 0.5 volt, which is the applied voltage. And that would give us 142.8 millivolts. Um, Another way, the, uh, it, the, the inductances are also proportional. We could have just said uh, 100 millihenries over 100 plus uh, 250 times 0.5, and we would have gotten the same value because this would yield the same ratio as this, and we would have gotten the same answer. Okay, so this has been a, uh, a look at um, uh, inductances in circuits. So this is a uh, series circuit, and then we looked at how uh, the uh, same principles in that apply to Ohm's law will apply to inductance, especially inductive reactance. Then we did some calculations with parallel inductance, and we calculated the reactance in the circuit. And okay, we looked at parallel reactances, parallel inductances, and inductance in series. We talked about ferrite beads. Now, your text doesn't go into the detail that I mentioned here, uh, but I wanted to bring this up simply because this is a common application where you'll see the use of ferrite beads.